Big gamers, what's up? It's me, your boy Waddles, and welcome back to the Minecraft Guide, episode number 89. It's a big farming day today, but first, we're going to slide over to a different farm. To kick off today's episode, we need to talk about the brand new, or kind of new at this point, Warped Farm and Crimson Farms. So, uh, in between episodes, I was gathering a lot of materials for today's build, uh, specifically warped materials and the trees. They grow really, really tall. If you build this farm in your world, and I, I didn't realize this before, how tall the trees would get, but it might be a good idea to put a ceiling on it, like cap this farm off so the trees don't grow too tall, unless you want really tall trees. If you want really tall trees, then you can bring some scaffolding with you, but that kind of defeats the purpose of the farm. So uh, the other option, build a second story to this thing. Basically copy everything, but make it taller. Aha, uh -huh, it would work. Will we do it? Uh, maybe, maybe sometime, Pro probably not. If we're being honest, I'm probably just gonna leave it like that. It, it worked fine. Oh, but today is the big day, the big project that I've been talking about for maybe like five episodes now. It's gold farm time. In today's episode, we're gonna build a working Minecraft 1.16 gold farm. Now, first, before we slide into the nether to build this thing, let's talk materials. You are going to need to gather a lot of things to build this farm. First, we'll start with the blocks that we got last episode. Magma blocks. You're gonna need a lot of these things. These are the blocks that zombified piglins can spawn on and piglins cannot. So, yeah, if you want your farm to be efficient, if you want it to be good, get, like, uh, two shulker boxes full or one double chest full of magma blocks. You need a lot. Next up, we're going to need other non-spawnable blocks. Now, of course, it's the 1.16 Nether update, so you already know we're going to use that tasty fresh blackstone in our build, but it's not going to be blackstone blocks because a blackstone block is a spawnable block. But what's not a spawnable block? A blackstone slab. Blackstone slabs are going to be perfect, so we're going to use those. If you didn't want to use blackstone slabs, you could use any other slabs or something like leaf blocks or glass blocks. Those would all work, too. In terms of an exact amount for these non-spawnable blocks, I don't really have one exactly because these aren't all of our non-spawnable blocks. Inside of this fourth shelter box are the rest of the materials. We're going to need even more non-spawnable blocks, but I'm going to switch things up a little bit to make things look cool. So for the first part of the build where we need some non-spawnable blocks, we're going to go with blackstone slabs. Then for the rest of the build where we need non-spawnable blocks, we're going to actually go with warped slabs. I think those are going to look really, really cool in this build. I recommend getting something like two shulker boxes full of non-spawnable blocks. So if you're going with glass or leaves, it's going to be a lot. If you're going with slabs, it's still going to be a lot, but it's going to be a whole lot easier to get. Finally, we're going to need these other materials inside of this chest right here. You're going to want to have five or so hoppers at least, one minecart with a hopper in it, a couple chests, and a trap door. You're also going to need a way to get up to this farm, so ladders or scaffolding. Now, we made a zero tick farm right before 1.16 dropped, so we have a lot of bamboo, so scaffolding is going to be the way that I'm going. Over here, uh, materials for a blast furnace, which we might as well make right now. You might want to have a blast furnace or two or three or four four or just a lot of this farm because it's going to produce lots and lots of gold things that you probably will want to smell down but overall these are pretty much all of the materials uh, of course you're going to want to have a couple extra building blocks as well just to make this farm look nice and cool once you're done but for the farm itself those are the big materials so collect those things up and then get on top of the nether Boom, on top of the nether, EZ, did it in my sleep. If you want to know about getting on top of the nether, check the last episode. But uh, now we're up here. Now, next up, we need to find a specific biome. Thankfully, we're already in that biome. You're looking for the nether waste biome. If you're going to build this gold farm, you need to. Big need. You need to build it in the nether waste biome. If you build it in a basalt deltas biome, if you build it in like warp forest, it's not going to work. Nether waste is the way to go. You're also going to want to have quite a bit of space. So, this world is an older world. We started it in 1.15, which means all of this nether over here is the OG nether, which means uh, basically we have a huge nether waste biome in here so this is going to be way way more than enough if you're looking for an exact number look for another waste biome that is at least uh i, I would say like 
32 blocks out from the center in all directions. So like 64 blocks wide. Y yeah, it needs to be at least a little bit sizable. Now, up on top of the nether, it's time to build our gold farm. But first, we're going to want to have definitely, probably, an elytra for this build because we're going to build it really high up. And if we fall, uh, yep, we're going to hit that respawn button. So an elytra, that can hopefully prevent the respawn button. Also, a pair of feather falling boots might be a really big brain idea too. But technically, you don't have to use those. Now, we're on top of the nether. Finally, we need to start building this build, but we can't build it here. We need to go somewhere where spawns can be controlled. You see, if we were to build this gold farm right here on top of the bedrock, it might work, but the rates wouldn't be very good because spawns would be happening down below us in the nether down there. How can we stop that from happening? Well, easy, actually. We can go really, really, really far away from it. So, to start, pick a spot and start building up. And now, if you're going to use scaffolding, do this. If you're going to use ladders, place a block, place a ladder, you know the deal. You need to do this all the way up to the world build limit. That's going to be 256. So, you're going to need a lot of ladders or a lot of scaffolding. In my opinion, scaffolding, that's a whole lot cheaper. So, that's why we're going with this stuff. But, uh, yeah, you could totally use ladders too. Now, there we go. We hit that height limit. The game's going to tell you when you hit it. Now, we need to follow this thing all the way up there this is this is is it gonna be a lot of climbing it's very very far from here so yeah also you might want to have some building blocks in your inventory before you go all the way up there just so you can kind of set up station and start building up there i have a stone cutter inside of one of my shulker boxes that's what i'm going to be using for making all of my slabs it might be a good idea to bring one of those too probably should have said that before we went in the nether <laughs> uh, but it's too late now now eventually the ground is going to disappear below you it looks like we're basically are in a void now and that's kind of what we're in we're all the way up at 206 currently we're way past there now yeah uh we're gonna be really really high up like away from the world and again the reason we're going all the way up here to 256 to do this is to control spawns like crazy big time so to start off we're actually gonna break uh one scaffolding not two we want to be at 255 which we are that's perfect now we're gonna want to place some building blocks down and create a little bit of a working platform for us so to do this easily with scaffolding place one scaffolding out go down hold down the crouch button and start placing some blocks now i recommend only placing a few blocks and getting your stone cutter out you really ideally want to make this platform out of lower half block slabs so where do i have uh where do i have it i think it would be uh, i don't know where i put it <laughs> it might be in that shulker box okay you're not you know i might not have a stone cutter here i might just have to craft one all right so stone cutter right there there we go now we can make some slabs and create a working platform for us now again this platform should be on the lower half slab of a block so like down here so we don't have spawns happening up here yes spawns can happen this far up in the world even at the world build limit it's kind of crazy now unfortunately even worse when we're talking about spawns happening up here a uh, gas can spawn up here which is the first thing that we're going to want to try and remove stop from happening if we have gas spawning we'll we're using this farm well we're gonna have to worry about gas fireballs shooting at us and also of course we're gonna have to worry about the spawn cap being taken up by of course a big disgusting gas we don't want that to happen here we go small platform it doesn't matter how big you make it you could make it really big or you can make it really small or you you could really just skip the platform altogether now gas spawning gas spawns are going to happen up here because gas spawning is kind of weird for a gas to spawn it needs a five by four by five block space and a spawnable block below it so basically what that means is right now a gas could technically spawn up here because of this crafting table i think crafting tables are spawnable blocks so if we were to move far away from this a gas would have the chance to spawn we definitely don't want that to happen the farm is going to be built out of magma blocks magma blocks are unfortunately a spawnable block for gas but you know what aren't uh well slabs blackstone slabs so we're gonna start by making a lot of blackstone slabs we're just gonna keep these with us in our inventory this uh box uh that could just go away we don't really need that right now now we're gonna want to pick an afk spot on our farm i think our afk spot is going to be let's say Ah, uh, do we do it right next to the ladder? Hmm, let's do it right next to the ladder. So, this is gonna be our AFK spot for the farm, but actually a few blocks lower, but that doesn't really matter right now. This AFK spot that you pick should be up high, as high as possible on a half slab block. So long story short, pick a spot where you're gonna stand while using this farm. 
This block should be all the way up at 255. We're gonna eventually move it lower, but this is just to get things started. After that, grab 24 building blocks and start building straight out from this block right here. Now, uh, we're gonna need to move right there. There we go, perfect. That's block number one. Then block number two, three, and you get it. 24 blocks all the way out from that block right there. Do this all the way up at the world build limit. Now, these blocks that we're placing currently are temporary blocks. We don't really need these blocks here. We're gonna pull them out eventually. So you could do them with solid building blocks. It doesn't really matter at all. Eventually though, you're gonna build 24 blocks out. On that 25th one, place a non-spawnable block right there. This is the start of our gas blocking platform. This platform is going to stop all gas from spawning up here. Now this gold farm, like most other giant gold farms that you've probably seen built on top of the nether, is gonna be a circle. I gotta send a big shout out to Random G Games for the dimensions of the circle that we're using in this video. Big, big shout out, leaving a link to this video down in the description below. So, from this block right here, we're gonna wanna go seven blocks out, uh, going like along here. Not seven that way, like, you know, along here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then we're gonna place an eighth block and go in diagonally like this and go two blocks. Then we're gonna go ahead and place another block and go in diagonally two blocks again. Then we're gonna do it again one more time just like this and do this with slabs or glass or non-spawnable block. And finally, one more time. So we have two, 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 two. Four sections of two and a section of seven over there. After our four twos, we're gonna place another block and go diagonally one, and then finally, uh, diagonally one again. So that's gonna leave us with one, one, two, 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 seven. That's this quarter of the circle. Now we're gonna need a center block. The center block goes diagonally out and one again. Now we start turning this thing and basically doing it all backwards. So we have our center right there, not counting that one, which means we have one, then we're gonna have a one, then we're gonna go out and place a block and go two, then we're gonna do that three more times. And then finally, after doing that, we're gonna go seven to wrap things off. On the eighth one, we should be right in the middle of this platform right there. So what I'm gonna do, just to make sure my dimensions are correct here, is place that eighth block, which is that one right there. Then we're gonna carefully move all the way back over and grab 24 more building blocks and build out and make sure everything is correct. Now, uh, while we're out there building the circle, take a look at that. We have a zombified piglin spawning up here already because these are spawnable blocks. Now you, buddy, you're gonna have to go. I'm sorry, goodbye, my guy. I will see you later. All right, so from this block right here, we should have to place 24 blocks, and then we should hit that final block right in the center of that side. If we do, our dimensions are correct. A big brain move right there, perfect. Exact dimensions, we're looking good. Now, we need to copy this all the way around here. So we do it again. We go seven, two, 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 one, one center, and then again, and again, and again, and again, until you have a complete circle. I'm gonna go ahead and get that in, then I'll be back once it's done. Uh, boom, the circle, it's done, but actually it's not. So this is actually just the inside of the gigantic circle that we need to build in this step. We uh, need to build the outside of the circle now. So to start, find the center of one of the sides. We're gonna go with this one right here. Now, right here, we're gonna wanna go one, two, uh, three, four, five. Five blocks out, or four, and then on that fifth one, we have the outside of the circle. Now, we need to make another gigantic circle. So, from the center block right here, start by building out seven blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then this time, because we want the circle to go around this one, we're actually gonna go inwards instead of outwards. So we're gonna place a block, then we're gonna go actually three blocks of this time. Then block in again, and three blocks. So, so far we have seven, three, three. Now we're actually gonna need three twos. So right here we have two, we place another block, then we have two, and then we do it again, one final time, another two. All right, so now we have seven, three, three, two, two, two. Now it's time for our ones, which we need two of. So there's a one, there's a one. Then finally, we have our center right here. Now after the center, you already know what we're gonna do. We're gonna duplicate it or replicate it, mirror it. So we have a one right there, that's a terrifying noise. And we have another one right there. Thank you very much, terrifying 1.16 nether. Then we have a two. And after that, two more twos and a three and a three and a seven. If you do everything correct, you should line up with the center of the inside of your circles. I went ahead and built out over there. We'll see if we meet up.
and boom here we are perfect so let's double check this we have one two three four and then on the fifth one right here the center exactly exactly perfect so now uh, you already know what we have to do now we have to continue this all the way around the outside of the circle and, and then after that we're actually going to want to fill it in on the inside when we fill it in on the inside again make sure you're using non-spawnable blocks i cannot stress how important this is if you do this with spawnable blocks you're you're messing up big time now this circle what are we building here well this top circle is like i've said before what's going to stop gas from spawning but after this step we're going to build three more layers right below this out of magma blocks those layers are the spawning layers why are we using these exact dimensions well if you've been watching the guide for a while you probably saw an episode about mob spawning remember that chart from that episode uh yeah that chart is the reason we're doing these dimensions right here basically the circle that we're creating is far enough away from us when we're standing in the center for mobs to spawn but it's also not too big for the zombified piglins to not detect us standing in the center the circle is the perfect size for zombified piglins to be able to spawn and for them to actually be able to get angry at us and find us a little bit of time later and boom we have our full top circle complete now believe it or not that is actually well it's not it but that was the hardest part of this farm once you have your first anti-gas platform in everything gets a whole lot easier so this thing is yeah like i said to prevent gas from spawning this platform will not make any piglin spawn at all hey you buddy you're making me nervous you gotta go away hey gold pans look at that very nice but yeah standing from our center point in this farm we're gonna see absolutely nothing nothing is going to spawn up here at all because things can't to make things spawn we're gonna need to make our magma block floors we on this farm are going to do three separate magma block floors you could definitely do more you could do like five six seven really you could do however many you want but for us three is gonna be way more than enough now these floors are actually really really easy to get in once you have all of that stuff in so to start we're gonna need to go down a little bit these floors need to be two blocks apart for our zombified piglins to spawn so what we're gonna do is grab 24 random building blocks go back over to our scaffolding and go down two blocks the ceiling is the bottom of this block right here so if we go down there's one and then we go down again there's two so now we need to figure out how to get out here <laughs> uh this is gonna be a little tricky uh let's see can we just go down like that and go over is that gonna work uh one two yeah that's gonna work that's gonna be perfect now our dimensions on this farm are very very important we need to keep these things consistent you don't necessarily need to count 24 blocks out though because we already have the circle over there basically we just need to get right under that circle that we just built just like this right here magma block boom we're underneath the circle now now we need to create a gigantic platform a gigantic floor that is the exact same dimensions as this circle up here but this time we do it with magma blocks spawnable blocks now while you're doing this you can actually go ahead and remove this line of blocks up here we definitely don't need this anymore and we absolutely don't want any gas spawning up here while we're doing this because gas they can't ruin blackstone but they could ruin our magma blocks definitely we don't want these magma blocks to go to waste so we're gonna go ahead and place the scaffolding back in over here so we can get up here and this crafting table you're gonna have to go away as well i don't want any problems at all this block is gonna be removed eventually but for now we're just gonna keep it here this is the center of our farm but yeah after you get that first circle in and you have your dimensions down this is all actually pretty easy you could go ahead and count your dimensions and make sure you're exact or you could just pay attention to the top ceiling here and make sure your floor the platform stays right underneath this thing right here now like i said on this build today we're gonna actually do three separate floors each floor needs to be two blocks below the last one so right here we have two blocks of space down here after this one we're gonna need two blocks and then finally we're gonna need two blocks of space as well i think i'm gonna go ahead and actually quickly get all of these magma blocks in this is all pretty straightforward just repetitive block placing lots and lots of block placing so gold farms are actually pretty easy to build it's just a big tedious long process but if you have the blocks the materials it's really not that bad it's just gonna take patience and a lot of time but uh anyways i have three magma block floors to build i'm gonna be back once those floors are in oh and i did this on the ceiling just kind of for uh, i guess indication i don't know if i'm ever going to need to find the centers but i switched things up and used polished blackstone slabs on the centers of each floor so there's a there's a line right there there's a line in the center over there you can kind of see it and same thing over there you don't need to do that but uh i did it just in case just in case i want the centers 
Oh, and uh, finally, to make your building process easier, in case you didn't know, crouch on the magma blocks and they won't hurt you. Oh, oh, and uh, one more thing too. Uh, this floor that I built right there, that path, that's gonna be kind of dangerous. Uh, gas could actually spawn on that. So I'm gonna inch my way back around and because I have extra non-spawnable blocks, blackstone right here, I'm just gonna go ahead and replace these with the blackstone slabs. I really, really don't wanna waste any magma blocks at all, if possible. But I think I've now said everything that I need to say. So magma block floor building time, let's go. Gamers, we did it. It took a long time. Lots of crouching, lots of damage taken, thanks to the magma blocks, but it's finished. It's good. It's done. The longest step of this build is now complete. We are pretty much in the home stretch of our gold farm now, which is good. Now, thankfully, I actually had a little bit of extra magma blocks here. This is how much extra I had. I like it. I did drop a few. I made some mistakes while building this thing, but thankfully, the mistakes have been fixed. We're good to go now. So, now we need to set up basically the grinding room, the elimination chamber of this farm. We're going to actually build a lot of this part of the build out of the warped blocks because the warped blocks are really, really clean looking. We can always come back later and change the blocks up if we end up not liking it. So first, you're going to want to find that central block that you started with, this slab right here. Now we're going to want to take note of the coordinates, so negative 34, 21, those are the important ones, and then we're going to want to actually climb down out of this farm and go to 246. If you built this farm right at the top of your world, like I did, then 246 is your number. So 246 is actually going to be right here. Now this block is going to be pretty much the most important block of this farm. This block is where we stand to use this farm. So right there, 246 and then negative 34 and 21. This is the exact block that we want. Now we're actually going to want to dig this block out and that block as well. Then we're going to want to climb back up because I need a crafting table. I need planks not solid blocks now we're gonna make a lot of planks so this step is going to require quite a few of those and we're also gonna need a staircase so we're gonna make some of those as well but lots of planks complete we're gonna remove that so things don't spawn up here and then we're gonna climb back down to our brand new standing block the operating block this thing right here now right in front of that block you're gonna want to place a slab just like that then in front of that slab you're gonna want to place another slab and then another slab so basically a solid block right there this is where we're gonna have all of the piglins stand on to 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 be taken out like forever goodbye, goodbye piglins. piglins solid block right there slab right there then go ahead and climb over here and remove that solid block right on top of this slab we're gonna want another slab so the piglins can't get to us now back here we're gonna actually want to take that out and do a solid block and then right on top of that solid block, we're gonna want a staircase. Okay, 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 hold on. Okay, so anyways, I was saying, we jump over here, we place a staircase facing towards where we'll be standing to use this farm. This staircase is going to allow the zombified villains to walk right up into this farm and get trapped in this spot right here. Now, we need to fully encase this spot so the piglins can't get out. So we're gonna do some solid blocks on that side and then some more solid blocks over here on this side. Then we can go ahead and remove that spot right there. Now, this is actually pretty much it for the elimination part of this farm today. The final thing that we're gonna need up here is a few more solid blocks just to make sure we're nice and safe inside of this thing. So if we do some slabs right there, then uh, we place another block and we do even more slabs right here. This is gonna make sure we're 100% safe all of the time. Now, I'm actually gonna rip this stuff out that I just put in here, place some slabs and do warp stems there. I think that's gonna look cool. I think this will add a nice touch to the farm. We'll do something like that. And then right on top, we're gonna do some slabs right here. So of course we don't have spawns happening in here. Now in the last episode, I talked about how I wasn't gonna set this farm up for AFK. That's definitely still gonna be the case. But if you wanted to make this farm an AFK gold farm, well, easy fix. Right down there, inside of that hole, you're gonna wanna place 24 minecarts. 
Minecarts are entities. In Minecraft, a thing called entity crabbing exists. By default, if there are more than 24 entities in a single block, the game will automatically take out all of the other ones. That's the mechanic that our cow crusher works off of and the mechanic that this gold farm can work off of. Now, if you're setting this up for AFKing, you're also gonna wanna station some piglins two or three blocks off of the center corner spots. You're gonna wanna name tag those piglins and trap them out in the block so they never despawn and never go away. Those piglins will be able to stand on those blocks way, way out there and always look at you. If they're always looking at you, the aggro will exist forever. Well, as long as you're inside of this farm. But we're not gonna use this for AFK, so we get to skip all of that. Basically, the farm gets a whole lot easier, which I definitely like. So, uh, this is the block that we're gonna stand on to use this farm. Now we need to make a little bit of a room around this spot. This room definitely needs to be on a half slab block or be built out of non-spawnable blocks. So glass, th that would definitely work. I took the scaffolding out for a minute so we can see a little bit better. We'll start by placing some slabs up on the side of this thing, then another slab, and then finally another slab. We're gonna want our standing area, our walking area, to be right up here. This block is 247 and a half. Now, how big should this be? Well, you kind of have a lot of options here. You can make this area a little bit bigger or you can keep it pretty small. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go three blocks out from the center in every direction and then make a circle. Then we're gonna take a look at it and see if I like the size. So right here is one, then we have two and then three. Then of course, we're gonna remove that, put that scaffolding back so we can get up and down. Then over here, we actually already have three out there, but these slabs, they're gonna actually have to go for now. So, now, uh, if I were to fill this in, we'd go like that, and over here we'd go like that, over here, just like that as well, and then we'd put one block in the center on each side. Now, what do we think about the sizing of this platform? Hey, it's okay, it's alright, you know, actually though, this might be perfect. We really don't need too much room on side of this platform because we're really just up here to take out piglins. We can set things up down below here, where we'll actually be going to get our loot anyway, so I think maybe i'm gonna go with this size now to keep piglins out of this platform easy we place some slabs around the edge now like i said we're gonna go with a lot of warp slabs here you don't have to use warp slabs you could use really anything i think i messed up over here this should go there yeah that should go there anyways warp slabs you don't have to use them you could use other blocks but if you're using glass or a non-spawnable block don't make your wall solid here because piglins need to be able to see you to stay angry so basically this area right here, you see where we're looking, needs to stay open. The piglins on the first layer will be able to see me always, and they'll stay angry. Now, uh, the piglins, how do they get from over there to over here? Well, uh, that's actually pretty simple. We basically just need to add a platform in connecting these two platforms. But this platform needs to be built out of non-spawnable blocks again. Remember, if you have an exposed spawnable block, gas are going to spawn. That's a big, big problem. So whenever you're using spawnable blocks, like these stems over here, you need to make sure you put a slab on top of them. Otherwise, you're gonna have a lot of big problems. So anyways, the piglins reaching the center platform. Start by creating a three block wide pathway connecting the center area over to the outer rings. This platform should be on Y246 and a half. Unless you're using a solid non-spawnable block like leaves or glass. If you're doing that, then it should be on 247. So once we have something like this set up, it's time to turn around and take a look at the grinding area. This could be a little bit confusing for the piglins, so we're gonna make it really nice and simple. We're gonna add some slabs there, and then a few more slabs right there. The piglins should pathfind and walk right over here. But if we set the sentry area up like this, take a look at this. This slab right here, at least without more things on top of it, would be really dangerous. Piglins would be able to walk right up here and walk right into our farm. So we're gonna need to stop that from happening. How do we stop that from happening? Well, pretty easy. We just put a few more blocks over here to completely stop that from happening. Now, I'm actually already in the process of renovating this area in here. We could do a bunch of slabs like this, but I don't know if I really like that. I feel like that makes the farm really, really closed up. So instead, I'm actually going to replace the warped blocks that we put in here before with blackstone blocks. And then over here, we're just going to kind of slowly fade that upwards right there. This is now a spawnable block though, so we're going to have to stop that from happening, which means we need a button right there. Now, I think to make a blackstone button, we're gonna need to do polished blackstone, and then yeah, just like that. So this button, that should stop gas from spawning. Uh, if any gas spawn though, then we'll just swap that out for another slab. 
Anyways, back to the outside. So currently, we have this three block wide path going all the way to the center area. That's good for this side, but for all of the other sides, that's definitely not good. We're going to want to create this on all of the other sides and then connect each side to this area over here. Of course, we're trying to get all of the piglins to move into one area right here. So this is actually pretty easy to do. All you need to do is place some extra slabs around the outside of this thing so piglins can actually move over towards this spot right here. Now, we're gonna go overkill on this farm because, I mean, because we can. But one more thing, uh, be really careful in here. If you place blocks in here just like this, uh, like the slabs there, they are spawnable blocks again, which is yet another block that you need to worry about. So maybe some more staircases. That that might be a better call. I think if we did staircases right, uh, right down in here, sunk into the ground, that should probably work fine they should be able to walk up right in here and then fall in there we'll need to do a little bit of testing but i think it'll work but anyways back to us going overkill instead of just doing the three wide paths on each side i think i'm actually gonna fill all of this in with warp slabs and that is exactly why i got so many warp stems in between the episode you definitely don't need to do this uh this is definitely overkill but i think it's gonna make the farm look pretty cool so I'm going to go ahead and place even more blocks, and then we'll be back once all of those blocks are placed. We're going to have a bunch of warp slabs in here, and I think, uh, hopefully, it's going to look pretty cool. i uh, kind of nervous, though. I, I honestly don't know if it will. Oh, and by the way, if you have, uh, like, areas connecting uh, over to the sides, you can take those out now. And this top platform that we built up here, we can actually take this platform out now, too, because we have that platform that's lower down there. Gamers, change of plan. I started putting the warp slabs in, and you know that I thought about it. It wouldn't have looked good. So, this is what I've ended up with. I have these little pathways going from the middle of each side, and then I have this circle going around here. Now, the dimensions here are three, and then a center one, and then a three, and then a three, center one, you know, three. So, uh, if you're going to copy the exact dimensions, that's what's going on here. Now, I have some floating slabs out here, because take a look at this. If we walk around this far, now I would have actually no way in I can't jump inside of it by the way change some blocks here to make it look a little bit better but yeah I wouldn't have a way in now also we really can't leave a way in if I were to make like a staircase here so I could get in then so could the piglins but if I put a slab out here and then I jump from this spot we can get in easy so that's what these slabs placed on the outside are it's always nice to have access back into this farm if we go outside of it for some reason but we are now just about finished with this farm we need to do one more big thing that big thing the collection system down below this farm so we're gonna need a hopper minecart we're gonna need some building blocks some hoppers some chests and actually i think that's gonna be it First things first, we want to move down below this farm and place some scavelings so we can see what we're doing here. Now, the piglins will go onto this block and be taken out, which means we want to put a hopper minecart right below this block. To do this, we're actually going to probably want to go down a little bit more. So if we go like that, that should maybe probably be good. So the goal is a hopper minecart right below this block, but that hopper minecart also needs to sit on a hopper. So if we place some building blocks just like that, and then we place a hopper going into those building blocks, we can then get a minecart with a hopper on top of it but we're gonna need a rail and your guy actually forgot a rail so we're gonna have to craft some rails nice and easy boom there we go place a rail place a hopper minecart then you can actually go ahead and get rid of that rail or you can leave it it doesn't really matter and actually that's just about it remove the temporary blocks that your hopper was going into place a double chest and then you're pretty much good but actually you aren't this chest is gonna fill up really really quickly so we are 100 gonna want to move down a few more blocks and continue this pattern one double chest is simply not enough for this gold farm, especially if you're setting this up for AFKing. Yeah, that's going to be nowhere near enough. So something like this, this will be a little bit better, but still, uh, this is going to fill up actually pretty quickly, but it it'll be fine. It'll be good for now. Now, to make my life a little bit easier, we're going to actually place some slabs down here too, and then eventually, I, I'm thinking eventually, we'll come back and set up a room underneath this farm, but definitely not today. We've already been at this for a long, long time today. Now, uh, we're going to cut right back to this farm in a minute. I have to go down here and get my scaffolding. I dropped a lot down here. Aha, aha, aha. Perfect, perfect. All right, now it's time to go back up. 
Now, am I going to leave scaffolding as the way to get up and down inside of this farm? Uh, probably not. I'm actually thinking about doing a twisting vine. I think that would be really cool. Then I could put some blocks around it, and that would keep things nice and safe. Then somewhere else, we can make a slime block exit to this farm, where we can basically jump out of the farm, we'd land on a slime block, and we'd be good to go. But all of those things aren't things for today. Instead, it's time to actually get this gold farm up and running. So, we want to double check and make sure everything's nice and safe in here. There's no way in, which I don't think there is. I did a lot of double checking while building this farm. Uh, everything looks good. Okay, so now we can actually go ahead and take this stuff back, put it inside of the ender chest, because why not? And now we need to begin this farm. So to start it, all you need to do is aggravate the zombified piglins. So you, buddy, uh, you're angry, okay? Okay, they're going to charge me. Now, is it going to work? I actually haven't tested this quite yet. Okay, they're running. Mm -hmm. We want to stand here while we're using this farm. They're going to run, and yes, they're going to run right over here. Look at this beauty right here. Oh, yeah, that is definitely, absolutely a gold farm. Now, little thing to know with this farm. Because we didn't set up the entity crammer, eventually the piglins are just going to fall in here and be taken out. You want to stay in here with your looting sword, probably with mending too, and continually use it. If you just stand around and wait, then the piglins are just going to be taken out due to entity cramming. Ideally, you want to take these piglins out yourself. Now, you could definitely level things up even more if you get yourself a mending looting three sword like we have. That is going to up the amount of gold that you're gonna get big time. Using a looting three sword on a gold farm, no matter what, is going to be best for the rates. Looting three is going to up the rates of gold, like, a lot, like a crazy, crazy amount. Now, take a look at these piglins. They're gathering up on the wrong side. That's because I'm not standing in the right block. If I'm standing anywhere in here other than that block down there, they're not going to go to the grinding area. If we stand on this spot, then they'll actually funnel into this spot. So, big question, big question. What do we have going on down here? Let's see. Okay, we don't even have anything in here quite yet. What's going on? Is this hopper not picking anything up? Oh, it might not be picking things up. Hmm. Interesting. All right, we're just gonna go ahead and turn that way down. They are very loud, but why would this not be happening? That's really interesting. Was there a change made to Hopper Minecarts in 1.16? Uh-huh, interesting. We're gonna grab that back and put the rail back and see what's going on. Maybe, maybe by removing the rail, we move the Hopper Minecart just a little bit too low for this farm? Is that what's going on here? <laughs> Hopefully that's what's going on here because otherwise, uh, yikes. All right, so hop your minecart on top of the rails, and oh, that was the problem. Okay, okay, I understand. So, you're going to need to leave that rail in there on your hopper minecart. Otherwise, you're going to have problems. That hopper minecart was moved just a little bit too low to actually pick up these drops. Oh, and by the way, look at the levels. Uh, this farm is crazy. This is going to be our farm, like, for everything. And take a look at this. These piglins are being taken out due to entity cramming, and drops are still coming. Yup. <laughs> Safe to say, this farm is going to be pretty handy. It's going to be great. Now, of course, we're going to take all of these gold nuggets turn them into ingots and barter with piglins we can take all of the rotten flesh and sell it to cleric villagers for emeralds and then all of this stuff can be disenchanted for even more levels and then we can smelt these gold swords up in a blast furnace for even more gold nuggets this is op <laughs> that's the only word for it op just very very good Oh, you guys, so how you doing? How you doing? Oh, you're doing well, or not, probably not so well. Okay. Another thing that you should probably know, this hopper minecart is definitely going to get overloaded. So if you're trying to get your drops a little bit faster, it might be a good idea to just climb up here, take the items out of the hopper minecart just like that, so it doesn't get overloaded as quickly. And, uh, yeah, this is exactly what I mean. Take a look at this chest right here. It is already filled up after using this farm for literally, like, three minutes. Maybe five minutes max. Yeah, the more chests, the better with this farm. But, elites, that is actually gonna be just about it for this episode of the Minecraft Guide. That is how you set up your own gold farm in your world nice and easily. Believe it or not, gold farm, easy build. Now, there are some simple modifications that you can make to this farm to make it AFKable, but in its current form, it is absolutely not bad. If you enjoyed today's longer episode, do me a favor, smash that like button and subscribe for more videos. All of my links that you're looking for are down in the description below. Today, I'd like to send a big shout out to my patron, Eric the Creeper. Thank you very much for the support. Thank you all for watching, and until next time, stay fresh, gamers. Goodbye, everyone.